Do you guys remember not so long ago when we did a little isopod series? I showed you how to maintain levels of humidity. I showed you how to make an awesome substrate. I showed you about a, a starter setup, all sorts of things. Well, I've got some really exciting news for you. Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So you probably won't remember, well, why do I say that? I mean, you could just look at the title and probably the thumbnail of this video and know exactly what I'm gonna be talking about. <laughs> but anyway, in, in this tub, uh, we set up our Kubaris species Panda Kings. Now we only started with five. Our breeding Kubaris, is not that easy to my knowledge aside from maybe Kubaris Marina. Um, I set this up to what I expected to be a, a good Kubaris setup and I must have done well because our Panda Kings ladies and germs have had babies. Who wants to take a look? You want to take a look right? Yeah yeah let's have a look. Here we have it. I put a fresh piece of cucumber because I was hoping it might entice some out for when we took some footage, but it didn't work, but that's fine. So, if I were to tip this over, ta-da. So we haven't got like hundreds and hundreds of babies in here, but the fact that we only started with five, and I think only one or two were actually adults, we've definitely got more than five now. Now when I last tried to count these, which was a couple of days ago, I think I counted around about the 20 mark. Now that doesn't sound like a lot. You're probably wondering why I'm so excited just for that small amount. Well, that is four times the size of the colony that I started with, considering they weren't all adults either. So I am well, well chuffed with this, but here and around we can't settle for these kinds of tubs not for something as spectacular as panda kings can we so we're going to actually rehouse these but before we do that let's slip on the macro lens and take a closer look at these beauties Actually, when I slip that macro lens on, I've given them too much time to hide away. So I can't even find the biggest one that we had. He's in there somewhere. Oh, look, there it is. Now, Kabaris do do the little roly poly thing going into a ball, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, let's take this macro lens off. And now that we've annoyed them all, <laughs> sorry guys, we're going to get them into their new home. Now, because I love these so much, I'm giving them a special enclosure. They're going into a glass custom aquaria enclosure because I think, I'm not sure on this, but I think the way the, the ventilation might work on a custom aquaria might be beneficial to our isopods. So yes, let's get this done. Oh God, my table's too close to my legs and the chair. Right, so. This is the custom aquaria cube that we're going to be putting our panda kings into. Now I'm not going to go through the way I set up the substrates and things in this. There is a special way I do make substrate for my isopods, especially the Kubara species. Uh, just, just watch uh, one of my previous videos on that. If I remember to put a card up here somewhere, I will do so. Um, and it's basically just how I make the substrates. So we've got a mixture of topsoil, sphagnum moss, a bit of activated carbon, leaf litter, rotting white wood, um, and we also add some mushroom infused oak to it as well. Like there's a big, big mixture, but if you wanna see exactly how I make it, watch that video. 
Um, so yeah, let's get the substrate in. Have a little mix roo see if we can make it look a little bit sexy, you know what I mean? Sexy isopod enclosure. Yeah, let's not make this any more weird than you just have. Okay, here we go. Okay, excuse the messy table. I put this all in a mixing bowl. Now you'll see that this looks kind of light. Um, and that's because there's quite a lot of the uh, shiitake mushroom block or shiitake, 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 I don't, I don't know which way you say it. It's a mu mushroom infused uh, oak. So it's, it's, it gives them food. It gives them nutritious food. So you've, you've got your, your basically added rotting white wood, but with that mushroom infusion, which is just absolutely ideal. Now, I don't know many keepers that do this method, um, so I'm still kind of new to doing that, but I just think that that is the icing on the cake. Oh, what a beautiful mix. Now, I've got some fresh wet moss. Now, I'm gonna put a wet side and a drier side on, so the moss is going to cover one half of the enclosure, and this is the enclosure that we're gonna keep um, moist at all times. Yes, I'm saying that word. As you can see in here, your darker patch there, the wetter patch, and you can see where it's steaming up on the side. You see how there's less on this side? That's straight off from the moss in the warm weather. So when we damp this, we're literally pouring water, not spritzing. If you want to spritz, you're spritzing the top layer, that's all good and well, that will dry out fast in the heat. So you want to pour water on this left hand mossy side. So here we go. Gonna damp it down, keep that moss nice and healthy and able to actually also grow in here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we're adding a bit of cork bark and we're gonna put one half over the damp side and one half over the dry side so they can still have shelter and choose which side they go on. But we're actually gonna re-add this in in a minute. I was just showing you how we put it. And the reason we're re-adding it in is because we wanna use all of the substrate in our previous home for our Panda Kings because there may be Mankai in there. Baby, 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 tiny little wood lice and we do not wanna lose them. So we're gonna carefully get that entire substrate mix in here. Okie dokie, so here is our original tub. Oh, oh, no, I don't want to be shaking them all about. Do the okie dokie. Right. So we've got some on here. Now, this has got a lot of crevices and things in this cork bark. So we're going to put the whole piece in. I'm going to put it kind of in the corner of the dry area um, to allow them to kind of filter out and choose which side. Now, I'm also going to put the other tiny bits of wood in like so. Our old bit of cucumber, we'll still keep that in. Now I've got to be careful here because I have used um, some limestone chippings. Now there's a bit of controversy, oh, there's one, oh, he just ran, of whether limestone is actually beneficial to Kubaris. There are people that say they've bred Kubaris, never needed limestone. But what I say is put it in because what harm can it possibly do using a natural rock from where they actually live. So they come from limestone caves. So you, you're only gonna be benefiting them surely by adapting the same sort of minerals that would be in their home. Now the controversy stands um, over the fact that they would eat the lime. I'm not doing it because they'll eat the lime. I'm doing it to, oh, we've got a tiny one. Tiny. Oh my God, I'm so scared of putting this in. Oh my God, there's another one just here. I don't want to hurt them. Um, anyway, as I was saying, I'm not doing it because I expect them to eat the lime. It's more likely they'll eat the algae off the lime. Um, I'm doing it because it imitates their home. Oh, we've got more walking around. Can you see? Oh, this is scary. Now the only downside to these stones that I was gonna say is obviously I don't want them falling when I'm tipping the substrate in and crushing any. So I'm kind of doing a scooping motion. And I'm gonna put all the stones in one area as well. 
means if I ever have to do this again, at least I know which area has the stones. So I've got to do a bit of careful scooping. Oops, I'm trying to take a whole layer underneath so that if there are any there, they're being cupped up, not crushed. And once the stones are out, we're going to tip the rest of this substrate in. Okay, we only have a few stones now. I'm going to take the mossy side. Again, I'm scooping. And I'll put it down here. Keep most of the moss to one side, remember. But along the backs, is no harm because one side will still eventually dry out and one side will stay wet. So, oh, there's one. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kubaris. Right, I really don't want to tip these, but there is no other way. It's getting to that stage now where I, I just have to. So if I put my hand in the way, we've got less places for them to fall. I'm lightly throwing the substrate on. Well, I'm not throwing it on. I'm lightly filtering it on so that they've got a chance to kind of crawl away there I really hope that the blend I've done in here really is perfect for Kubaris I can't see why it wouldn't be I really don't oh we've got more babies you can't really tell from here, I'm so sorry guys, that this video is kind of like hiding a lot of it, but honestly this, this Kubaris change just needed to be done regardless and I need to keep the safety of the animals um, to my top priority over what you guys can and can't see. So because we've got a substrate falling on the moss there, I'm going to do one more soaking of that side and try and manoeuvre some of the drier substrates across to our drier side. We already had a Kubaris just now, a Panda King running across the moss, so he's obviously wanted the, the more hydrating side of that enclosure. So here we go. Oh, he's just there. There's two of them. So they are maneuvering to the mossy side over that of the dry side. Fantastic. Okay. Now I'll cook back, back in that middle there. So there we have it. Let's, let's pick up the camera freehand a bit and show you what we've done. So here it is. I would bury this, but as I said, there are some Kabaris running around. One is just down there. You see how easily they can kind of maneuver under loose substrate that if I don't want to compress this down and actually crush any, but you know, over time, the substrate will sink a bit this will sink with it it will come a bit more naturalized if they get enough light on the mossy side the moss may grow but yeah so he's going into shelter they don't like to be out and about much see there in the moss we have a lot more sticking to this damper wet side and limestone caves are normally found by water obviously so it would make sense that they prefer the damp side to the dry. Now, if you look, we're skimming along this dry side here and we, we don't see any invisible sight. And these guys have maneuvered mostly from this bit of bark. You can see there was one just ran through the hole there. Their old bit of bark, which I have placed on the dry side because the larger opening of this bark is on the damp side. So, oh, I should have had the light like that. That's a bit better, isn't it? Now, why have I given them a nice glass enclosure if most of the time these guys stay hidden? There's one. That's because most of the time they stay hidden. But at night, I can put the light on and watch them scurry away. It will be fantastic. And we've given them enough space to, to continue their breeding process. And eventually, when we've got the next generation or two generations down the line, we'll be able to revisit this. I'll be able to lift this up like this and you should see plenty of them um, within that cork bark hide. So the design is completely about being able to see them when we want to. We just need them to continue breeding. 
So there we have it guys, what do you think? Oh, let's pop this bit back in as well. Now I've got a bit more leaf litter downstairs that I'm gonna whoop, lob on the top but for now. Let's close that up, put it on a shelf. And if you're happy to stick around guys, there's an exciting Clubaris breeding project idea that I have in mind that I'm willing to share with you today. So excuse the mess guys, on the top here we have some Phasmid over. Um, this is guano, which I do put sprinkles of in with my isopods, especially Cubaris, because Cubaris will actually eat guano. Guano! But we'll talk more into that another time. This enclosure here is my old Therophosa apothesis enclosure. You can see it's dry and raggedy, and that's because um, mine was a mature male, and he's actually spent the last few months living with Andy at so many legs. We haven't had successful pairing yet, sadly. Um, but I need to show you this tank because this is where the Kubaris breeding project is going to happen. Right, let's just put my chair back. Oh God, oh, getting too old for this. Right, so first of all, you might be like, what, another project? But you've got Project Paradise to deal with. Yeah, I know. Um, project Paradise is my number one and it's where 90% of my YouTube funding goes. Yes, we are demonetized right now, but like the Patreon money and so on, it goes on this. This Kabaris project is something that's going to come solely out of my wages. And the project is this. I'm going to see how these Kubaris get on. And providing this same setup works and we get even more breeding, then we're going to try and take on an even rarer species of Kubaris, an expensive species of Kubaris, and ones that we don't establish that well in the hobby yet. But the idea is this, we're not just going to go and buy them and chuck them in a setup like this. That tank over there, I am going to adapt over the course of around about half a year. I am going to make a substrate like this, but even better, I'm going to really work at kind of what works more in the soil, what works less. We're going to even check the pH balance of the soil. We're going to try and make it a more alkaline based soil, which is what you would have around limestone caves. We're going to try and adapt the moss, get the moss to grow in there. And we're going to have plenty of limestone and we are going to make it almost like an environment of a limestone cave. I mean, we're not going to sit there and, you know, cover the walls and the lid and whatnot and make it look like one cave for, you know, for, for our benefit. No, we're, we're, we're going to have it as that sort of environment. Um, we're going to have it bioactive. We're going to have springtails in there, living in there, breeding in there. We are going to use different animals to break up the soils before we even introduce these cubiles. We are going to let wood naturally rot in there as well. We're going to keep it very, very wet for a long time to let everything break down. And then we will, excuse me, start working on a, a wetter and, and drier side down the line. I may even introduce a worm or two to help break up the soil and then remove them. We may add some millipede species as well um, in there and then remove them again before the Kubaris is added. And this is to create this ideal home. This home where the soil is already broken up. It's naturally mixed, not just mixed by my hands. It's mixed by actual invertebrates that I'd be adding in there and all will be removed again aside from the springtails which will continue to live in there and then after about half a year we should have this well established natural beautiful vivarium with a great just perfection of soil within there it's the idea, it's the dream. Whether it will work or not, I don't know. But if you want to follow me on that journey, I'll keep you guys updated every month or so. Um, I'll do a video if you like on the original setup of it too, and the things we add and the things we remove. And then eventually, in all this time, I will be then saving up for maybe just 10 of a specific Kubara species. I don't know which yet, maybe Jupiter, maybe duckies. I really don't know yet. Um, I'd like to get duckies, to be honest with you guys. And I just think that if I could establish them, I can breed them. And if my methods work, I can pass that information on to other breeders. 
and then I can sell offspring um, cheaper than you you find them off of the, the greedy sellers, as I sometimes call it. Uh, no offence to, to anyone. I understand why their price is high, but come on, guys, you know. Um, so that will then in turn help fund Project Paradise. You see, so this is a long haul thing. This is something that will take years to develop generations and generations. But if it works, I can share that knowledge with isopod keepers. We've got Project Paradise where I'm gonna be sharing stick insect knowledge around the world to you guys here at YouTube. And on the side, we are gonna to attempt to work on the Kubara species of isopods. And then I'll be able to share any expertise and knowledge I learn on the way for that too. That will be two specific things that people can learn about here on Bug Realms. And then, ladies and gentlemen, if we succeed in both Project Paradise and the Kubaris one, I will then work on another type of animal. I want to, by the time I'm old and grey, be able to say that I have mastered, in a way, various types of invertebrate. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you did stay to the very end, let me know in the comments below that you were happy to listen to me just blabber on about projects. <laughs> it just makes me happy to know that you're willing to sit there and actually watch my content to the end. So please let me know. Um, and yeah, ba bomb bum bum Let's leave it here. Speak to you guys next time. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.